player, I am loading the equipment overview. Hey guys, TK1138 here, rocking a brand new hoodie from Project FDL, featuring the FDL 2X. Look at that. Yeah, really stoked. I love hoodies, I love FDLs, this is great. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. Welcome to my first rival sode. Why is that worth mentioning? Because if you've watched any of my gameplay footage, you'll know I have not used Rival. Actually, until this past war this last weekend, I've never actually used Rival in, a, in an outdoor war before. Just haven't. Kind of liked my stuff. But this past weekend was the rainiest weekend we've ever had in the SCNC. I mean, we were soaked. And our field was flooded. My high crush dart cage with the aluminum Morpheus guide sucked with big, fat, swollen, wet darts. I didn't want to risk my FDL, again, because I've already broken it once when I slipped in the mud in a past rainy weather game and broke it. Also joined the Mudbutt Society, which in the SCNC is a club you join, an illustrious club of honorable gentlemen and ladies who join if you get covered in more than 40% of your body in mud. If any of you guys follow Lord Draconical on, uh, on YouTube, he did a vlog once of an SCNC war and it showed my back and it showed them scraping mud off me. It was horrible. But one really cool thing that came from this war is it got me to try to use Rival. Now, I knew Rival rounds perform better wet than normal darts do, so I was going to give it a shot. That said, I don't really have a whole bunch of Rival stuff. So I actually showed up with a stock uh, Apollo. That did not work very well. The other one I had was an Atlas. That worked worse. I should have some footage. So yeah, the, uh, the stock Apollo was not doing it for me, guys. It was, it was pretty bad. But luckily my friend Bobo, also known as I Am Bobo Lolo, apparently he's got some little YouTube channel too, had a whole bunch of blasters for sale, including the Artemis. Now, I'd actually sold an Artemis before, never actually opening it up. This one is with the really cool different kind of forward pump grip and a stock attachment point. So I actually spent the rest of the war rocking this Artemis and had a lot of fun. Now I've got blasters with great paint jobs, I've got $350 FDLs, but the thing that I don't do is run around like a crazy person anymore. But with this thing, I was running, I was diving, I was sliding, I got wood chips in places I can't even tell you about, but that was a lot of fun. And so I actually got to really use this. But the main reason you guys might be interested in talking about this episode is I also picked up one of these because I got shot over and over and over. I'm talking about you, Jacob Solomon, shooting me over and over and over with one of these things. Now, stock, they still perform really well, but of course his wasn't stock and his was a pain in the ass. So what did I do? Got one of my own. Now, as cool as the Artemis is, if those of you who've looked online, there really isn't much you can do to it internally that's really going to increase the performance. Now, you might be able to put another spring in there, but with as many gears as the Rival line likes to feature in their blasters, it's really not going to benefit you too much and is likely going to increase the wear on your blaster. Even feeding springs aren't really great to upgrade. So, I'm going to leave it as it is, stuck with just the different version of this and the, uh, the stock attachment point, and we're going to roll with it. But the main thing I'm excited for is the Kronos. Now, most of you know what this is. This is the Rival Kronos. It is the first Rival sidearm. It's actually the second variant. The first one came out was the Deadpool Collector's Edition, but I had to get my hands on one of these. Why? It's in my paint color, which I like. But more importantly, I got myself shot a whole bunch this past weekend with this. Not even just in the stock version, but a modified one. Jacob Solomon, I'm talking about you, son, because he kept shooting me over and over. So before I even left the park, I'd already ordered one of these. What else did I order? I ordered something from our friend Out of Darts. Now, most people put a K26 into this blaster. Out of Darts has a Kronos cut K26. That just means it's a K26 that's already been cut down to fit specifically in this. So I'm going to run this through a chronograph, and then I'm going to modify it with this bigger spring, and we're going to see how that goes. Now, to round it all off, I'm also going to talk about my next favorite rival product that I'm using right now, and that's this little grenade. Now, I know Walcom and a couple other people did this. I got this thing like four weeks ago, and I didn't mean to do a review, but it, the weather has sucked. So, I'm going to explain a little bit about this. Um, I didn't play with it very much because it really isn't going to be great for outdoor wars, and I'll explain why if you're interested. Who knows? You're watching, so hey. Right then, so right now our Kronos is, oh, there's a ladybug on the chronograph, get out of here. 
Right now our chronograph is a uh, dead stock. That means it's got the internal five round clip that comes from the factory as well as the stock spring. So looking online, I saw this thing averaging about like 85 to 95 FPS performance, which is about what we expect from a rival blaster. But we're gonna throw this through this cool chronograph that you guys helped me get and let's see what we got. All right. So we're looking at a high of 104, a low of 94, and an average of 97 FPS. That's about what we were expecting, so we're just going to go ahead and call this good and move on. Cool. Again, not going to go into super much detail here because if you really want a great video, watch Out of Darts' mod guide to this. I'm just going to go ahead and quickly go through this, put it all back together, and we're just going to move right along to the, the chronograph test. Right then, so we got our K26 thrown in here. I'm gonna be honest, I'm expecting a lot of power out of this because it is definitely not as easy to prime anymore. I know I tried to make that look easy. The first time I filmed this, I actually kinda looked like I was struggling for a second and I didn't want you guys to see that. So we're gonna load this up, throw it through the chronograph. All right, cool beans. So we've got this K26 chronos and we've zeroed out our chronograph. Let's give it a shot. Well, that was unexpected. So we are at a high of 155, a low of 152, and an average of 153. I would say for just literally dropping a spring in here, that is an insane amount of power. Now, it's gonna be interesting to see how this thing works over a long period of time. If we're gonna see that high spring load break down the blaster, but for a $20 blaster, I'm definitely stoked. Right, so that was the Nerf Rival Kronos with the K26 from Out of Darts. It cost like $5, shipped within four days. It was literally a plug and play modification. Super easy and turned this from a really good sidearm to a terrific sidearm. Looking forward to using it on some of the wars where I don't want to carry my full loadout. Now I did mention earlier about holstering this thing. Now I do have like pretty much every kind of holster that Apex Tactical made, including the strong arm holster. Now it's a little bit snug, but this blaster fits in the Apex um, strong arm holster. Little bit of modification and it's gonna be really good. So seeing as I don't really carry my strong arm into games anymore, I'm definitely looking to make this my Kronos uh, holster. Like for real guys, this fits really well. You still have that forward strap keeping it from coming out and it's not the hardest thing to pull out. So it's a little snug. I'm gonna make a modification and I'll talk about that later. Right, so the last thing I'm gonna review on this quick little Rival Sode, I haven't really covered Rival before in this channel because I've never really used it, but I'm starting to see the hype. I kinda of like this, and I've got another war this weekend with the AUN, and I'm gonna be pretty much rocking all Rival and see how that goes. But, the last thing I'm gonna cover is the grenade from Light Take. Now, I'm not gonna retread over territory I already walked. I know Walcom and a couple other guys have already reviewed these things and talked about the merits and everything. It's super cool. I was super stoked. It's meant for gel balls, which are like biodegradable BBs in a sense, but you can throw like 12 to 15 rival rounds in here without any sort of modification. It just goes. Now that said, as a player, this was super cool. I was super excited, thinking all the tactics and throw it in there, clear. Anyway, as an admin of the SCNC, I kind of had a problem because this thing is still hard plastic. And I'm sure a lot of clubs are probably going to be like, oh, I don't know about that. Because if you chuck this at someone, it's going to freaking hurt, guys. But in the end, it's still a really cool grenade. Now, for those of you who haven't seen it and just assume I just, you, you only watch me, super cool. I'm the coolest guy. I had the biggest channel ever. I'm just kidding. There's a couple other guys. But it's, uh, you lift up the spoon. It's got a little, like, motion detector in here. If it gets rattled too much, the grenade deploys. Now, what that does is it throws up a couple of spoons, which is where you load your rival rounds, and it flings them. Now the limitations to this is that makes it a very directional grenade. So you actually have to throw it with the target in mind. You don't just like throw it and clear like a pineapple frag. You've gotta kinda aim. Pineapple frag. Really, is this World War II? Anyway, so if I throw it like this, the balls are gonna deploy this way. If I throw it like this, they're gonna kinda deploy this way. It's really directional. For my purposes in the SCNC and Outdoor Wars, it's not gonna have like 
a lot of practicality, but could be really cool in indoor wars. So if any of you guys have seen some of these used in an indoor war and have like a YouTube channel or know someone who does that's got footage, please link me. I want to see it. I want to see it. It's going to be really cool. But we tried this at the SCNC. Unfortunately, it's a little hard. I can probably wrap it in some sort of foam, but that's going to really diminish its carryability. Other than that, my garage is like literally covered with rival rounds because this might be the coolest thing I've played with in 2018. Like I've filled this thing up probably a dozen times and just <laughs> my cats hate it, but it's so fun. So if you're in a club that allows them or you play any sort of indoor games, this could be a really cool purchase and I recommend trying it out. Again, I don't know how much this is. I think it's like 15, 20 bucks. Really cool. I've been having a lot of fun. I'd pay 20 bucks for this. So check it out. It's on NF Strike or Light Take. You can find them on Facebook or their website, nfstrike.com, and pick one up. The other cool one's a Claymore. Don't have that one. Kind of want that one. Looks kind of neat. Let's find out another time. I'm not doing that one right now. Right. So I know I learned a lesson with the Ice Brusha video. You guys aren't going to let me get away without firing something. Now, I didn't fire the stock Artemis because, you know, I kind of get it. It's a stock Artemis. I don't need to. The K26 Chronos, totally going to fire it. But I know you guys are all going to comment, Hey, TK, why didn't you fire the grenade? So here I go. All right, guys, pull the pin. Here's a spoon. Safety glasses. See? Only 60% deployed. <laughs> right, I just spent five minutes looking around my garage. I only found eight of those things. Eight of 12. These things go everywhere. So again, if you guys find any footage of someone making like a tag in a game with one of these, please send it my way. I would love to see it. But like I said, you guys can find these on nfstrike.com. Really cool, worth checking out, a lot of fun. Right guys, I appreciate you tuning into this little rival sode. I haven't really used the rival line, but after the last war, I kind of see what the hype is about, and I'm pretty stoked to run it again at AUN. I talked about the Artemis, which even though I'm leaving it stock internally, does have a little different uh, pump grip, as well as the out of dart stock attachment point, super cool. The rival Chronos, as well as the K26 from out of darts for $5 that you too can purchase, as well as the Apex Tactical Solution strong arm holster that this does fit into. It's going to take a little bit of work, but I think it's going to be worth it. And then lastly, the NF Strike grenade for gel balls that can be converted to fire with rival. So for those of you who've been wondering why I haven't used rival, I don't know. I mean, with an FDL and a whole bunch of stripes and all this, it's not easy to put it down, but I had a lot of fun. So expect more Rival content in the future. Anyways, if this is your first video, please feel free to like it and subscribe. I do content sort of regularly. I don't know, not always. Mostly it's gameplay footage, a couple reviews, live streams, whatever. I will be doing End War again. You can also find more information on Facebook at TK1138Nerf, which I will put like right there or something. And you can also message me there if you have any questions and you don't want to put it as a comment. Anyway, last time I'm going to say this because I think I might have said it already three times. Thank you very much for tuning in. This is TK1138. Nerf well, my friends.